Okay, so today we're going to talk about the last tool that we will discuss in our manufacturing processes class. And this tool is called a die, D-I-E. A die is a tool that's used in a machine called a press. And we have a variety of presses. We have a stamping press, which is the main one that is uh, in, employed in this area. Um, dies are made from a very simple basic tool to a much more complex uh, tool. The basic simple ones can be made from steel rule and they sometimes call them cookie cutter dies. The more complex ones do a whole lot of um, features on a part. They can cut, they can bend, they can tap, which is making threads, uh, all kinds of processes. And that complicated tool is called a progressive die because it does a different uh, variety of steps as the piece works through it. So in order to explain how this works, I have a sample drawing here. And we start with our drawing and we break down the geometry of it. And this information then is used to calculate something called tonnage. Tonnage. And that number tells us what size of a press to use. And you should have already watched the couple of videos I posted on stamping presses and using dies. And they're in your module in Canvas. So to look at this part, I need to break down the geometry. And this is a pretty standard part. It's used in a lot of the drawing classes and in a lot of the manufacturing processes courses. So this particular part, this is the front view and the right side view. And on the front view, we can look at our geometry here. And we see there are two lines and they are each 1.5, one and a half. So our linear uh, perimeter, perimeter is three inches, okay? So then we need to look at these arcs and circles. And we're going to use that old math formula that you're probably pretty familiar with. And it's 2 pi r, okay? So in this case, the, and this calculates a complete circle. The complete circle, all right? So if we look at this drawing, we actually have two half circles that are each 9 sixteenths. So the radius is 9 16 So we have this 2 pi r here. So we'll multiply 2 times pi, and I'll use the pi button on my calculator, but you could also use 3.14. And then the radius, let's convert it to a decimal. So we can clear this up and say 9 divided by 16 is 0.562. That's the radius. So in order to get the perimeter of this circle, I will say 2 and then pi times 0.562 and I get 3.53 and that's probably far enough decimal place for us. So we have 3 inches and 3.53 so I have 6.53 inches so far and let me get rid of this alright and we still have these two holes to look at. So there are two holes. They each have a diameter of 0.375, which is 3 eighths to you folks who work with decimals and fractions a lot. So we have two of those. So we would say 2 pi point, oh, that's a diameter. Okay, so we would need half of that amount. Uh, so 0.375 divided by two, and I can tell you it's 0.1875, okay, so 2 times pi times 0.1875, and I get 1.178, we'll say 1.8, and there's two of those, so I need to add that again, and 16, 19, carry the 1, 6, 7, 8, six, seven, eight, so eight inches and 890 thousandths. That is 
the perimeter of what's going to be cut. So looking at my information here, we need to know what material this part is made from. And here it says cold roll steel, and it says it's a 16 gauge with a thickness of 0 0.0598, 0 0.0598. So what I'm going to do now is multiply these two numbers. So 8.89 times 0 0.0598, and I get 0.531622. And in case that doesn't make sense to you, that is actually the area that the shear, the cutting part, is going to come in contact with. And because the part is so thin, that's why it's reduced.